game over. Peace down. How did Carlson beat the modern defence in 21 seconds? Well, you're going to find out in this video. Part 2 will be the live recording of this bullet game, but part 1 will be the opening theory. Magnus Carlsen takes on top US Grandmaster Daniel Naroditsky. Both players have one minute each on the clock. I will make suggestions so then you can apply them in your own games to improve your chess. If it's your first time here, hello, my name is William. Let's begin. Timestamps are below if you want to skip to a section. Opening theory, let's go. Carlsen has white, Naroditsky has black. e4, g6, d4, bishop g7. When you put the bishop here, you are putting pressure straight away in the center. Knight c3. Now, in this position, white has a queen defending the center pawn, a knight defending his other center pawn. c6. Black plans to strike in the center with d5. White can play bishop e3, so now he has bishop and queen defending his center, d5. Why does black play like this? Because he is encouraging white to overextend. In the game, knight f3 was played. But by overextending, I mean black wants white to play this move. Now, this move looks good. You're just pushing your pawn forward and you're getting space. But black can try and chip away at white center. So if you have this position with black, you may want to try these moves. f6, attacking the pawn. The knight can actually come out to h6 and then to f5 to put pressure on the bishop and on the center. Another option, this bishop can come out to g4 later. You can follow that up with castle. Even the queen can come out to b6 to put pressure on d4 and b2. Lots of options, lots of ways for black to play. So let's say f6, f4, makes sense. White wants to keep his center. Knight h6, here we go. The knight can come to f5, attacking this bishop. Knight f3, bishop g4. Pinning the knight to the queen, bishop e2, knight f5, you attack the bishop, bishop tucks back, castle, and the game just goes on from here. But this is the kind of position black wants. After d5, another option might be to capture, but after this, black has no problems. Black has so many ways in which he can put his pieces, so let's discuss all the options. Knight can come out to c6 to put pressure on d4. This knight, it could come out to f6. But it could come out h6 to f5 to put pressure on both. Another option, bishop is facing the pawn. You might get the queen out, so then the queen also faces the pawn, but also faces b2. When this happens, with this, black has targets, and he's ready to castle as well. Also, in general, when you play a pawn capture like this, you've got one less center pawn. You've only got a D pawn, really. The C pawn isn't in the game at the moment, so you don't want to give this option to your opponent. Now that we understand why black plays this opening, maybe we can avoid it. After bishop e3, d5, black strikes. Knight f3, you keep it flexible. You just get your knight out. <clears throat> in the game, d takes e4 played, and after knight takes e4, we have knight f6. There's a lot of pressure on the center pawn. Black has two pieces on it, but white has three defending it. Bishop, knight, queen. So white is holding his center. Knight f6. Offering a trade? You could take it. Knight takes, and e takes f6. It is very rare in any opening to get four pawns in front of your king. And this is one of these openings. By the way, I'm just going to go straight back to the beginning just to show you another opening in which we get this kind of pawn structure. If we take it from the top, e4, c6, the Karo Khan, d4, d5, knight c3. You can see it's very similar to the other opening. Black is striking in the center with these two pawns. Take, take, and now you play knight f6. And if you take, here we go. This opening is very popular nowadays because black can play this setup, you get four pawns in front of your king. And the difference is, in this opening, instead of playing this, you just get the bishop out this way. So let's say bishop d3, bishop d6, and the game goes on. Even though it is a different opening, the structure is still the same. So the plans are gonna be very similar for both sides. Bishop d3, black can castle. Black can get the bishop out to g4. Black can get the knight out. 
One option is actually this, one, two, three. You can get the knight in the center as well. After knight a6, by the way, this doesn't actually work at the moment because queen a5 check, very cool tactic to spot in your own games. And after c3, you can take back with the queen. Bishop d3, castle, castle. Part one, opening theory is now over. Now for part two, the live recording of this bullet game. Modern defense again. Bishop e3, e5, take, take, take. Ah, Nakamura plays this. Okay, interesting. Rook e1, bishop e6, b3 with c4, I like that. Knight d7, h3. Stopping any piece coming to g4. Knight b6, planning to come in the center. Rook e1, getting the open file when that bishop moves out the way in the future. Bishop e6, controlling squares in the center. If you get this position with black, try these following moves. Knight to d7 to b6, so then you control these central squares. Do the same with the bishop. Put it here, then you control d5, c4, just like the knight. Another option, put the rook on e8 later, so then you're competing for, with white's rook. Another option, maybe put the queen on d7 or c7. So if you put the queen on d7, it's like the queen and bishop line up. Generally, that is a good strategy. Maybe in the distant future, you play f5, so then this bishop comes in the game. Another pawn break idea, you could go c5, even though that is a bit difficult at the moment because you can just take it. But these are all ideas for black. If you get this position with white, try b3. With this move, you get control of that square. You're also planning c4 to get even more space in the center. Later, queen up. Just like I mentioned for black, queen up with a bishop. White can do the same. Put the queen here with the bishop, it can come to f4. It can come to h6, but it's not needed because this bishop isn't that great. So if we're talking about trading pieces, you don't need to. Notice when you move the queen up, then the rooks are connected. Rook can go in the middle. Maybe you put both rooks in the center on the d and the e file. So many options. Rook e1, bishop e6, b3 with c4, I like that. Queen d2 with bishop f4 as well, hitting the queen here. Now, just got a nice position. Bishop back to f1, cool. f5 is there. Bishop f1 guards this. If c5, d5, bishop f5, queen a5 attacking this, queen, or oh, queen a8, take rook e1, offering a trade. Oh, he takes with the queen, interesting. Now the queen just comes back. How to continue playing this? Perhaps the rooks are equally good, so Carlson decides to trade both sets off. Take, take. Rookie one, take, take. Why is white much better here? In the end game, four against three. This is to white's advantage. Consider the pieces. This bishop is much better than this bishop, which is dead at the moment, trapped behind his own pawn. This knight is restricted. Can't really go forward. Might have to go back. This knight is well placed. And I would say these bishops are equally good. Overall, white is better. Let's see what happens. Queen back to d8 on its starting square. But once the rooks come off, the queen has retreated for white. But now it can just go forward. Queen back to a5 attacking his pawn. You can't play knight c8 because your queen is hanging. So maybe actually, oh, he should have moved the queen to f8 maybe. Because after queen a5, knight c8, that's one way to defend it. But queen d8 played. Queen a5. Queen back to a8, bishop e3, setting up a tactic. Queen back to a8, bishop e3. This is the target, d5, just like that, bishop e3, and is that a piece? That is a piece, that's why he takes. Queen a7, piece down. Queen a5, queen back to a8, bishop e3, setting up a tactic. And one move, knight d7 is possible, and then the game goes on. White might get space with g4, then the bishop can come to g2. You might reroute this knight because it can't actually go to any square at the moment. So it might come back to d2, and then it can come to e4. But after bishop e3, black played bishop e6, falling for a tactic, using the pin on this file. Carlson now crashes through in style, he plays d5. If you take with a pawn, bishop takes, and you have just won a knight. 
That's why after d5, white is now totally winning. Black goes for two pawns for the piece. Knight takes pawn, take, bishop takes. But the pawn on a7 is now hanging, offering a queen trade. Is that a piece? That is a piece. That's why he takes. Queen a7, piece down. Amazing. Knight d2, reroot, knight c4, even bishop c4, bishop e5. You might take and go back to f3. Bishop b8, queen d4, bishop h6, mate. Bishop h, okay, bishop f4. I would have set up, mate. Game over, peace down. Here is YouTube's suggestion, as they probably know what you want to watch better than I do. But if you don't like their suggestion, here's mine. How to checkmate Carlson in 30 seconds by Daniel Naroditsky in A Sicilian Dragon.